In this video, I'm going to talk about the differences in phase detection autofocus that exists with the mirrorless cameras. First, let me start by saying that I have no issues with mirrorless cameras. I have used them for years, and I will continue to use them. But there are some significant differences in how they work compared with traditional DSLRs, and it might be helpful to understand those differences. The first thing to know is that while the principle behind phase detection is the same, the design of the DLSR system is very different. The dedicated PF system has its own lenses that have their own aperture restriction. These lenses focus separate real images on the dedicated AF sensor, and as many as eight images are compared for focus with a Canon double cross type AF point. Additionally, the PDF sensor does not have a rejective color filter array overlaying it. Because of all of this, the DSLR's PDF system is nearly independent of the lens in use and the image you see in the viewfinder. That's quite different from how phase detection autofocus works with a mirrorless camera. With a mirrorless camera, there is only one real image being focused at the image sensor. Instead, what is being compared for phase difference is two virtual images, each being made up of half of the light exists in the real image. The camera may be using masked pixel in grayscale, so it's not color filtered. In this case, the pixels are generally replaced similar to how a hot or dead pixels are mapped out of digital images. But most cameras are now using image pixels which are also color filtered, which rejects about 60% of the available light before it is further divided into two. That could mean as little as 20% of the available light is used for focusing. This lack of light can result in an exposure offset for the autofocus pixels and can result in artifacts such as banding in the final images. Some cameras are using subpixels under a single color filter, which are then combined as a single image pixel. But each subpixel is still getting 50% of what remains after a 60% rejective filter. In all cases, these AF pixels are arranged in rows, which makes them sensitive to image lines of contrast that are perpendicular to them. This is all very much the same as how the split prism viewfinder in my Nikon F3 from the 1980s works. And currently, as of the late 2021, all mirrorless cameras are only sensitive to vertical lines. Also note that once the image is maximally in focus, there are no longer two virtual images to pair for phase offset, and the camera must switch to contrast detection. But the system can still monitor for a split to reoccur and then correct for that. Because of all of this, the mirrorless camera's PDF system is very dependent on the lens in use. And the low light capability is dependent on the lens's max aperture. Typically, the better the spec for low light capability, the faster the lens is required. You won't find an aperture specification for a DSLR because that PDF system has its own aperture restriction. And the mirrorless camera's PDAF system is also very dependent on what you see in the viewfinder. In very low light and for darker images, you may need to turn off the image preview so that the camera can use the brightened viewfinder image for focus. This is very common when using flash. And in good light, you may be better off stopping the lens down with exposure preview active. This will increase the depth of field and make it easier for the camera to see and focus on smaller details and details of lower contrast. This list is from the Canon R5's Advanced User Guide, but these limitations are not exclusive to only the R5, and they are not even ex all exclusive to mirrorless cameras, but some of these may be exasperated with mirrorless PDF systems. Exposure preview may cause a loss of details, and those details then cannot be focused on. If your lens has a slower aperture than the low light specification for that camera, then that camera's low light capability is going to be reduced. In situations where there's only contrast in the horizontal direction, say a small bird in a bush and some horizontal branches and some vertical branches and a little tiny round bird, 
chances are the camera's going to grab the vertical branch, not the bird, and definitely not the horizontal branches. Small details and details of low contrast are easily lost due to shallow depth of field or misfocus. Lighting that changes colors as it flickers when using autofocus pixels that are color filtered. If the subject is out of focus and you can't see it, the camera can't see it either. And the last is image noise due to low light, ISO amplification, etc. can be confused as image detail and cause the camera to miss focus. None of this is to say that the mirrorless camera's phase detection autofocus is inferior or handicapped. It's just different. And it can be exceptional. In order to accomplish this, the cameras use a very high level of automation and intelligence. Unlike a DSLR, the AF will tend to function better when you give the camera more freedom to use more points and auto selection. It will tend to work better with color information and scene recognition, more rather than less. And it will only continue to get better as automation processing speeds and algorithms improve. I'm very much looking forward to the future and what's to come.